Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. This is our Ford 555 backhoe. That is a grapple. And this right here is a Summit Hydraulic Universal Third Function Kit that is powering that grapple. On the previous video, we took that third function kit, we got it installed, we got a bracket mocked up, we got all the hydraulic hoses made and routed and ran a test run just to make sure it was gonna work. On today's video, we're getting everything tidied up, a whole bunch of bracketry, a little bit of welding, and then fingers crossed, if the weather holds out, maybe we'll actually get to put this daggone grapple to the test and see how it does. I did finally pick up a 240 extension cord so we can run our little Vever MIG welder all the way out here and off the 240 from the Miller Legend welder. Which is great because now I can actually run this off the 240 instead of running it off the 110 off of this little fella like I was. In case you haven't figured it out, step one is going to be finishing up the welding on that bracket it's just kind of tacked into place to make sure everything will fit the way we want it to I'll try to get these big lines pulled back down and then get this to rotate out of there I'm gonna have to crack those lines loose to give it a little bit of play I think I just noticed a problem with my install from last time. We'll sneak you in here. I don't know if you can see how much of a twist I've got in that hose. We gotta fix that. A little curve action isn't gonna hurt anything, but that twist definitely caused some problems in the long run. So what we gotta do, we gotta get that fitting broke loose, and then we can use the fitting on the hose here to get it twisted around so it just curves under here instead of being all knotted up. Not good, not a good scenario. Clint from CNC Equipment taught me to use an air hammer to break these fittings loose. I don't have an air hammer, but I do have an SDS bit that I've been using for some time. I just cut the end off, buzz on those a little bit, helps get them loose. Not ideal, but I don't own anything over an inch and a quarter, so run on what we got. There we go. And now that she's loose here, doesn't have to be that loose, just enough to kind of break the tension between the JIC fitting on the female and the male. So then I can put a wrench, or the right size wrench, and I can roll that hose whichever way I need it. So now you can see she's going the right way. It's got the right curve in it, so that way when we pull that slack up, it'll just curve up and around and it can find itself up in there and it's not all twisted up anymore. Should have had that loose from the get-go, but we are where we are. So we should be good here, which is good because I need to back these screws out and put some thread locker on there. And same with these screws, I want to back those out and put some thread locker on there and get those clicked down to what they need to be. But welding this bracket's going to be next. I think I'm just going to do it from the the top side, I got decent access. We'll just cover all that up with some welding jackets. That should do the trick fine. And then all the hoses have fire hose on them, so hopefully that does the trick. Oh, I don't think it actually looks too terrible for not being a welder and hanging upside down and just kind of guessing where I was at. For quick touch-ups, this is a high-performance enamel. Not too shabby. Real fancy technique here. It's called that's all the further I can get the can in. If she gets a little athletic on us down here, I don't think that matters too much. Oh yeah. Look at the athleticism up there. Sprinting down the hill. Well, that'll be okay. It'll keep the rust at bay. That's the main goal. And I'll hit her from the top side a little bit too. Make sure we get it from every angle. Definitely don't want any rust on this machine. That would, well that, that would just really bring the value down. Clean batteries, those are key. I'm glad we're pointing that out. Well, that paint does its thing. Let's figure out our bracketry for this section. I'd like to get one here, 
maybe one here to make sure we keep these hoses back and tight and secured from this loader arm. I found this piece of pipe here. I think with a little creativity and some welding and a plasma cutter, the fella can make some brackets. Only one way to find out. I'm kind of trying to visualize this as I go. So just cut on both sides and I'm going to cross cut them, get a bunch of halves. I want to try to make five of these brackets, two for the cab and three for the loader arm. What I'd like to do is try to weld them together like that, like that, probably like that, somehow. So here's the jig, I got the ends cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to slide them together like that and weld them up with each piece on, which will give us that gap on each edge and then tighten the center. The catch is I got to make sure I get my spacing right or when I'm done, I can try to drill this out to get a bolt in the center. Welded there and there and there on both sides. I'm gonna take a flap wheel and just clean these up really nice. Get the bottom good and smooth, get all this deburred, try to get everything as even as possible. And then I gotta drill a hole in this and figure out how I utilize that hole to attach it to the machine. I'm thinking just welding some bolts on. Kind of what I'm thinking. And that's what they're looking like now. The edge is all cleaned up. Look pretty decent. Bottom's flat, everything deburred. I'm gonna take a wire wheel and clean the inside out. And we'll start getting some holes drilled. And that's what they look like all cleaned up there. Good enough for what we're running. Gonna pre-drill it with a small bit first, a little pilot hole. And then we'll run the full size bit through. Because of how that weld's built up, I think I might have to take a grinder and just clean those welds up a little bit so I got enough room for the bit. Unless I can use a smaller. That one might work better. So here's what we ended up with. They're not the most perfect thing. Fella could probably buy one that looks better than that, but I think that's going to do us just fine. I'm going to clean these up a little bit and start getting some paint going on these. And then after that, we'll hop over to the loader side of the operation. See if we can figure out how we're going to get them actually mounted. So honestly, what I'm thinking, this kind of has a dish to it. Anywho. Wouldn't take much to clean that paint up, cut that into the stud off or bolt off, and just weld a couple studs. I want one on this side of this bracket and one on this side of the bracket so it keeps it really controlled in this area. And then we'll probably go dang near to here. So I just cut the head off of it. We're just going to get it on there about as straight as we can and see what happens. Wow, these absolute beauties tack up just a little bit with that paint and I might have found a fatal flaw with this idea by the way uh, we'll find it here shortly we're gonna go underneath here we're gonna do a little bit of lock tighten and try to get that third function valve up into its permanent location and secured and then hopefully those are dry enough that we can start getting these hoses routed where they need to be so I got these two on the back here we'll back both those out that's what holds this mounting plate on throw some lock tight on those get those snugged up and then we're gonna do the four bolts up there as well and if a fella's confident enough about their layout on everything, 
you could do all this up top pretty easy. But I wasn't 100% sure, because we can flip this around. We could put the ports coming out the other side, give her the old flip-flop if we needed to. Just doing a little bit of blue Loctite on this. Just so nothing vibrates out on me. I also wasn't 100% sure if I was going to be able to use the bracket they sent, or if I was going to have to fab something up myself. Loctite on those. Snug him down. I'm confident somewhere. Pow! There we go. That's it. Don't lose that. Oh, she's through. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's where we're at. We're not far from where we need to be. Awesome. Oh, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Can you guys even see? All right, there's one nut started. I'll get these snug down and get it pulled into place. And then we'll snug all our hose fittings down. This one's pulling kind of hard. Probably got some slag on it when I was welding. We'll do the right thing and just keep going with it. So I followed both of those hoses back. The routing looks fine. This one could definitely stand to be about a foot shorter, but that's the factory one that came off the machine that terminated here anyway. So I was just trying to save a hundred bucks and not have to get another one made. But if it becomes a problem, it's pretty easy access from this point and right here to get that changed out in the future if we need to. And with all the extra fire hose protection for abrasive, pretty happy with it. And this all looks good. I'm happy with the way this is all routed. Good comfortable loop out of the way of the linkages. And then up through there in the fire hose protection. Next thing I want to do, uh, fire the generator back up, take the wire wheel. Should have done that with those bolts down there. But that one tight nut reminded me I need to take the wire wheel around all this, get all the slag. See those little, see those little balls of slag on the thread from welding? Get that all cleaned off so it runs down. And then we'll try our first homemade bracket and work our way to that end. Now, because that nut won't fit down directly in between those two, I've gone and cut up some really small pieces of tubing that fit right over that bolt and should act as a spacer between the hose holder and the nut. I don't know how much this fire hose is going to mess me up. I guess as long as I have the hose to the inside of it. Let's get this routed up here. Let me grab a socket. Just snug enough to kind of hold it there for the time being. Just keep moving down the line and we'll go back and get it all tidied up even better. I think that's gonna work great. What my concern became was when I looked down at where this gap was, I was worried that at some point when the loader went all the way up, I would end up with a gap issue there, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to, uh, let's, let's, let's clean it up. Well, it would appear I've missed a fitting based on the, the little dribble puddle underneath here. And I know which one it is too. This one right here. The old hose hatchet here. We're gonna cut us a few short pieces. Oh, it's the accuracy for me. Yep. 
And then we're just gonna use the outer jacket because it's a little bit more user friendly as far as getting it to, I don't know, whatever this motion is. And I'll loosen these up and that way I can wrap relatively tight some hose right underneath that bracket. So it is the following morning, the rain just quit. It is December, it is 60 degrees, it is the Midwest. Anybody from the Midwest knows exactly what that means for our evening tonight. So we're gonna try to get this wrapped up before what's coming through comes through. Here's how we finalized all this. Gave her the old coal mine special the other, other evening. Doesn't look too bad. I'll probably clip the length of these longer bolts off, but not too bad. Everything looks really nice and tight. If I fell on it, I could probably just throw a zip tie between the two as well and gain even a little bit more clearance, but I don't think we're going to have any issue there. Here's where we're at down on this end of things. Not too bad. As far as this goes, they sent a plate to weld on so you can run some bulkhead fittings and get these nice and secured. I'm not 100% sure where I want them. I put a lot of thought into it. I ran this up and down the other day to test that. You guys saw that. I still don't know where I want it. This connection, this point here is the most vulnerable. Even on skid steers I've ran, you can tear these hoses up. You can, sometimes these hoses are too short. You can break the fittings off. This is the most vulnerable point. And I think what I want to do, hey pup. I think what I want to do is run this a little bit and just kind of see what's going on up here. And then we'll have to figure that out in the long run. It's going to be getting the electrical all ran and finalized how we want it. So here's what we're working with. We've got this little switch with momentary buttons and it's got a place to mount it, but that's going to be, well, it looks like we've got some options. Those sleeves slide out for the size of the joystick. So hopefully we can get that slide on our joystick. We've got the power. We have this tail that runs over to this wire. And then this is what splits over and goes to each side of that third function valve. I'm sure this is all strong enough with, without the extra protection, but I'm an extra protection type of fella, you know? It doesn't take a tremendous amount of time to save me a little headache in the future. And then I would assume if a fella wants one button to do one function and one the other, all you'd have to do to switch that is just switch which side this plugs into. So we'll plug it in, and then when we run it, we can kind of make the decision if we like the way the switch is set up or not. And then we're going to run right over here and come up to loader control right here. Oh, I think those are bushings for the bucket that are all watered out. What a treat, huh? A little sandpaper, they'll be good as new. See if we can get this joystick in figured out right quick. I would think that just twists off somehow. Should. I guess there goes all the dreams of having a big eight ball on here one day, huh? Yeah. Win some, you lose some. So it's got different size inserts in here. I'll show you what I mean. Let me get these Allen screws popped off. There's different collars in here, or whatever you want to call them, different sizes. So you can shim down to whatever size you need on your joystick. It's not bad, a fellow might heat this and bend it forward, you know, so it's a little more like that, but I don't hate it. So we're just gonna jump off down here for power. I'm gonna to figure out which side of, so there's 12.3, and that, well, now that's interesting. I shouldn't have anything there. And I've got five. I wonder if we found my ghost draw. I wonder if it's in my... Been having a ghost draw on this tractor. I wonder if it's in the master switch here. We're going to cut just about a foot of that whip off. Slide a piece of heat shrink down. Slide some protection across this thin section. And another piece of heat shrink. Do the heat shrink connector first. And it just holds that protection, locks that in place so it can't slide up and down the wire for us. 
and that's what we ended up with color matched heat shrink ends and then back in the plastic loom all the way back to there let's make this connection temporarily so it's master off nothing but hopefully kabow If you can hear it or not. So on this end, what I'm thinking long term is fabricating up a pole that comes off here and is kind of spring mounted in a way, very similar to what you'll see on the back of semines between that fifth wheel connection it allows those airlines some freedom of motion. So I just kind of got this thing mocked up here. I'm sure this is going to fall off rather quickly. But I'm thinking some sort of spring mounted pole that allows this thing to move. I guess I'll have to track down one of these rigs at some point. Mike says you can get these relatively cheap at auction. You know, the not so fancy ones, which would be fine by me. Because the only issue with, not that he wouldn't let me borrow it, but the only issue with swapping implements is you're swapping fluids. Which I did check with him before I did this, but he said this thing's been on so many different machines he doesn't think it really matters at this point. And I said, fair enough. I think the whole setup's gonna work. I think everything looks really good. I'm a pretty big fan of their joystick adapter or joystick option that the comes with the solenoid looks good all tucked in down there wiring looks good for now there's a chance we might pull this cab later this winter and do the cab rebuild we've been wanting to do if we do that then i'll probably take that wiring cut like five feet out of it do some butt connectors and get it cleaned up even more but i think for function wise it's looking pretty slick right now i'm just waiting for the dry weather this coming summer that we can start tearing into that mess because this is this is gonna be the setup for the job. The things I've been able to do with that little 755 tractor and the things I've been able to do with this backhoe since we've rebuilt it, I can't imagine the things we're gonna be able to do with this third function setup from Summit Hydraulics. And if we can track us down one of these grapples, we'll be moving quite a bit of material and at a much faster rate, more production, more content, more projects done more quickly, a whole lot of more. And I'm okay with it. I don't know if any of that made sense. I'm just in a really good mood about this. I just can't believe how well it's working and how well it's going to work for us. It's a huge upgrade for the homestead. No denying that. Next video, we're going to be right back on the dump truck project. I need to get that to a sir. I have a place I want to get that truck to status-wise before the first of the year. Because after the first of the year, we got to go down and do some work on the new Captain Cleman World headquarters. So, we got quite a bit of work ahead of us, but it's all going to be a good time. If you guys are having a good whatever it is you're having and i hope i get to see you on the next one this is just too cool man link in the description for summit hydraulics if you want to check it out i'd recommend it